we're going to talk about is exponential growth and decay. So, for those of you that like my class but hate chemistry, um, this will actually help you in chemistry later on because you all will do exponential decay later. Because half lives of different elements are exponential decay. So, so let's talk about the word decay for a minute. So let's say I'm a nasty old hunter and I go out and shoot that deer like we were talking about a minute ago. And I'm so mean that I don't even want to eat the deer. I just like the fact that it dies and I leave it behind. So that's not very nice, right? What's going to happen to that deer? Okay, probably, right, some little bugs are going to start eating it. You know, probably a fox or something will come by and eat some of the stuff off of it. Is everything going to break down? What? Okay, eventually the bones won't, right? They might get smashed up by, you know, other animals trampling on it, but they'll be left behind, right? That's why we have fossils, right? Because the whole stuff was left behind. So, decay kind of has this hint that, yes, it does deteriorate, but it never really does what? It never, it never completely goes away. There's always a little something left behind, right? Okay. So that's what we want to think of when we think of decay, because Here's what happens when something is exponential decay. It actually goes like this. And then as it goes down, it reaches a spot where it just never really, it gets really close, but never actually gets there. Does that make sense? So see, you're saying it starts real high, and then it's just going to go down and down and down and down and down, like that but it never really completely goes away. See, that's what this graph does. Because if you think about it, when we're thinking of a graph, this is zero right here, right? So if it never actually gets to zero, then it's never completely gone, right? Same with exponential growth. It starts, you have to have something to grow from, so it starts really small, and then it goes up and up and up and up and up and up. And then it starts going up really fast. Kind of like if you have some rabbits, right? You've got to have a rabbit to get another rabbit, right? Thank you. Okay. So you have to have something to, to start from. Okay. Everybody understanding okay so far? Okay. So the next thing we have to understand is what the equations look like. So first of all, we have y equals a times b to the x. So the a that multiplies out front is always the y-intercept. Okay, so a is the y-intercept, b is what we call the growth or decay factor, depending on if it's the growth or decay. Does that make sense? So B is the important, is the more important number here. So how can we tell by the equation if it's growth or decay? What would be your guess? That B, go ahead. All right, so you would think most of the time, so far, if it's negative, it goes down, right? This is one of the few times where it's not like that. So if B is bigger than 1, what do you think happens? Is it growth or decay if B is bigger than 1? It's growth. But here, if B is negative, eh, sometimes if it's negative, funny things happen. What we're really concerned with is this. With B is between 0 and 1. So if B is 
uh, some fractions, or b is less than 1 but not smaller than 0. So let's say how that can look like. So that can look one of two ways. It is a fraction where the top is smaller than the bottom. Right? So that makes it smaller than that makes it smaller than one. And then it's a decimal that is written zero point whatever. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Right, if it's written zero point whatever, it's it's not bigger than one. You'd have to have some number out in front of there. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go through a couple real quick. Is this one growth or decay? The one from kind of like the one we did on the warm-up. Is that growth or decay? Okay. So actually, I just I always do this. I want them written like this. What about this one? Is this growth or decay? Is that growth or decay? All right, so this is growth. This is decay. What about this one? This is about as hard as they get. Is that growth or decay? It is growth. Because remember, the number in parentheses is the important number here. The other number is the y-intercept, so it matters, but not in how it grows or decays. Does that make sense? The first number is kind of where it starts. You don't really want to think of it like that here. Uh, you want to think of it as the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so let's talk about graphing a couple of these. So what if we talk about y equals 2, oops, 3 times 2 to the x power. So if you want to graph these, what would be the best way? What? Use your calculator. Uh, but the calculators, you're just going to get something that looks like this. Right? That's how you all always draw it, and you expect me to mark it right on your test, right? Right, that's what it looked like in my calculator. Okay. So what's a better way to use your calculator to find the exact graph? Use the table. So we go y equals... Uh, 3 times 2 raised to the x power. I'm going to put that in my y equals button. Then how do I get to the table? David. David. All right, you hit second and then graph. That's right. And then here's the x's I want to use. I'll explain why here in a second. I want to use x equals negative 2, negative 1, 1, oops, 0, 1, and 2. Why do you think I want to use those? What? All right. Yeah, it kind of shows where it's really small, right? And it shows where it starts to go up. And it shows where it crosses, right? So it shows three important things. What it does when it's negative, what it does when it's positive, what it does in the middle. Right? So that's why I chose those numbers. So here's my table. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So at negative 2, it's 0.75. Now you would kind of think that that might should be negative 0.75, but it ended up not being. This is 1.5. This is 3. This is 6. This is 12. Right? Everybody agree with that? 
Okay. So how could I graph that now? Yeah, I just draw a little grid and I draw the points in. So negative 2 up 0.75 is right here. It's like three fourths the way up. Negative 1 up 1.5, one up 3 at 0. Up 6 at 1, up 12. So then my graph looks like this. What do you think about that? Does that look like what it's supposed to look like? Yeah, I do want you to draw the line. So is this growth or decay? All right, so by the graph we can see that it's growth, right? If you couldn't even figure it out by using the equation, you could just use the actual graph. So let me have you do one on your own. Once you do y equals 4 times 1 half to the x. So graph that on your own using the table in your calculator. This is 4. This is 2. This is 1. This is 8. This is 16. So listen, when you're going to draw graphs, especially for these exponential regression numbers, you're really going to get some big numbers really fast. Okay? So instead of going up by ones, I'm going to go up by twos here because it's going to be easier to count that way. Oops. There's 16 right there. So I'm going to go up 16 right there up to 8 right here, up to 4 right here, 2, and then 1. So you see that this stuff really goes fast. What? It's just a dot. Okay. So these aren't bad, right? Okay. What? Only the line at the bottom have what on it? Oh, yeah, they both do. I just didn't. Okay, the last thing that you have to do today is given two points. So I'm going to do this, 0, 4, and let's do 5 here. 5, 18. I want to know the equation of the line that goes through these two points. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start. I know I need y equals a times b to the x. Or the equation of the curve. I'm sorry, I said line. Do I know how much a is? How much is a, Brene? Why is a 4? All right, this is the way the y-intercept is written. So if x is 0, y is a. Does that make sense? So we have x equals 0 here. So we know we have y equals 4 times b to the x. What else do I know? Mitchell? What? How do I know y and x? Okay, I know y and x from this equation, from 5 and 18. Thank you. So 18 equals 4 times b to the 5. Everybody agree with that? So what am I going to do? First, I'm going to divide by 4, which gives me... Um, what is that? 4.5 equals b to the fifth power. Anybody know how to get rid of a fifth power? So you will need your calculator to do it. There's it's not all right. It is a square root kind of, but it's not square root. It's a fifth root.
And here's how you do that on your calculator. You pop it up. Make sure everything's cleared out. You hit the number 5. Then you go to math. And you go down to here to this little X. And you use that symbol. So what you're saying is this is the fifth root. Does that make sense? And you're going to do it a 4.5, which is 1.35. So that equals B. So your equation then is Y equals uh, 4 times 1.35 raised to the X. So was that that bad? I don't think so. I hope you don't. All right, let's do one more together, and then we will be done. Let's try through um, 0, 3, and then we're going to go through um, 4, and we're going to go through 48. Uh, for right now, yes. Okay, so first of all, you know that A is 3. You know that you're going to use X equals 4 and Y equals 48. So you set it up like this. Y equals 3 times B to the X. So 48 equals 3 to the b to the fourth, divide by three here, and uh, b to the fourth equals 16, right? Take the fourth root this time instead of the, then you have b equals, you get, so you go to math again, go down here to, oops, Type 4 first, then go to math, down to there, of 16 is 2. So even though this didn't look like much, you have y equals 3 times 2 to the x. And I keep writing it like that, and I really want to write it like this. Okay. Any questions? Here is your homework, page 572, 527, 2 through 12. So if there's any other questions, I'll be around in just a minute to answer them.